Good science fiction always makes us think, and great science fiction entertains the hell out of us by doing so. So here are the five best sci-fi books of recent times that I enjoyed. This is Bertolo Meshko, and you're watching the channel of the Medical Future. Number one, Ready Player One. Okay, it's a low-hanging fruit, but Ready Player One does deserve all the praise. Ernest Klein's novel gained a cult status immediately after its release because of its 80s and 90s nostalgia. It's basically a love letter to the childhood of many of us. And it came at the right time. I mean, there are new movies of Jurassic Park and King Kong coming up. We are living a zero-light version of the past. But the greatness of Ready Player One goes beyond style and tone. It's not just about the past, it's about an accurate prediction of the futures I've seen. Virtual reality will change our lives more than Apple and Facebook combined. The barrier between the real world and the virtual will slowly vanish, and it's not necessarily a dystopia. It will create a new kind of social network between people and bring them closer to their shared experience. And unlike how it was presented in Wally, gamers are going to be the most athletic people. Oh, and one more thing, the film is fun, but the book is the real deal. Number two, Six Wakes. This one was nominated for both the Hugo and Nebula Award for Best Novel. The story is set on a generational starship taking humans to their new home, but the crew is made up of clones. In this future, people take backups of their minds and when they die, those backups are restored into new young bodies cloned from their own DNA. It's an interesting way of solving aging and mortality and the question is obvious, is a copy of you really you? But it wouldn't be a good sci-fi without a fast-paced plot. So when six clones wake up from restored and outdated backups, we have a murder mystery on our hands. One of them killed the others, but nobody remembers anything. So basically, this is a closed room, whodunit, murder mystery, in space, with clones. It's a recipe for greatness. Number three, the theme is fires. Well, technically, uh, this is a trilogy of books, but it's one big story. And it's another debut from a previously unknown writer who writes as pragmatically as Arthur C. Clarke and as thrilling as Michael Crichton. In the story, a girl named Rose discovers a giant metal hand buried under the earth. It's a thousands of years old, made out of unknown metal hand and has strange symbols inscribed in it. This bizarre artifact remains a mystery 17 years later, but Rose became obsessed with it. When she realizes that it has various other components scattered around the world, the hunt begins to assemble this creature. And the hunters are so obsessed whether they could, they never stop asking whether they should. It's also about what happens if we have to bend our biological features to adjust to new technologies. So say no more. Number four, Artemis. It's a new novel from Andy Weir. If his name rings a bell, he took the literary word by storm a few years ago with his novel The Martian. A year after that, uh, it was turned into a movie that became a blockbuster hit. He became an overnight success, but there was a little doubt whether he's a rising star or a one-trick pony. Well, the answer is kind of both, but in a good way. In Artemis, we get the same tricks he used in The Martian, but in a fresh new way. This time we are in for a high story on the moon, but it's the same kind of highly detailed scientific puzzle and it takes you by force all over again. Number five, Annihilation. Uh, Jeff Vandermeer's book is a game changer in sci-fi. It doesn't just turn everything on its head in the jar, it's also something unprecedented in literature. We follow an expedition of investigators tasked with exploring Area X, a mysterious dome that has popped up out of nowhere. Area X defies explanation. Nobody knows its origins or what happened to the people who lived in there. But instead of focusing on characters, Vandermeer doesn't even give them names and instead of focusing on a story, he's more interested in mood. What's new in Annihilation and what makes it great is that it strips away objectivity as nobody in the team can agree what they see. It seems like Area X presents itself differently to everyone. And that feeling of reality slipping away and our perception is being unreliable sets the tone for the horror of the uncanny. Annihilation is a spiritual sci-fi like never before. 
I hope you will enjoy these and if you have any suggestions for me, I can't wait to hear your favorite sci-fi books.